Alright team, today we are going to be going through all of the art that I made in 2023. Intro. Okay, this art will not include any sketches. This will only be finished artwork that I did in 2023. And it will also include all of the uh, stuff I did for the beginning of my sophomore and end of my freshman year of art school. These are not going to be in order necessarily um, because I forgot that I also did 3D art this year. So those are going to be like in the middle, but I actually did them at the same. I have a script here. They were actually done at the same time as these ones. So sorry. <laughs> Okay, I hope to put them on screen and I hope to maybe add in some of the planning that I did and for the 3D pieces, I will be adding in videos except for this one, I don't have a video for it. The first artwork that I did this year was called Marker Felt. Um, for this, this was an assignment for my graphic design class and for this, we had to pick a font and make an artwork based off of the font. I picked Marker Felt. Um, I really like this font. I think it's really playful and I really like that. So we had to make basically a poster for a font and then we had to put things that we thought that the font looked like, the vibes it gave off underneath it. We also had to do a bit of research into the font to kind of design the poster. Uh, the next one we had to do, we had to make a poster for a fake event and we had to pick something with historical meaning or a mythical creature to be the main purpose of the whole paint. I chose Sandman, um, specifically the German tale of Sandman. In this tale, it was a, a mythical tale obviously, but it was said that if you did not go to sleep when you felt tired, Sandman would come and steal your eyes and feed them to his children, the crows. So what I did was I focused on the crow aspect because I didn't want to make a caricature of Sandman. I thought that was kind of expected. So I instead focused on the crows and I made them eating the eyeballs. Based on my research, it also said that the top, the little stuff at the top it is in German and it means Sandman is coming, which is what people would say to those who looked tired. Assassination Day is the next one. It was uh, another graphic design project. We had to make a rude invitation to a fake party and we were told to base the design off of Swiss design. For the rude invitation, I didn't want to go with an insult because I thought everyone was going to do that. So I wanted to go with something that was more felt more like inappropriate or like something that is kind of taboo like a taboo uh, subject so i chose assassinations <laughs> and i chose that because i think a lot of people are really curious about assassinations um and there are really famous ones for example jfk uh lincoln basically what i did was the i put the date of the party that i was going to have the invitation for. The date is the day that probably the most famous assassinations President uh, Lincoln uh, died at the exact time and date of that and then I put the names of the people on these little uh, lines. The next one is a fish comic that I made. We were told that we had to make a graphic novel page, not a whole graphic novel, just a page of one about literally anything. At this time I had not read many graphic novels and I was not really familiar with comics or anything like that. As I've mentioned before in past videos, I have a lot of fish in my artwork, so I chose to do a fish that was fishing for a person. So it kind of rolls reversed here. To be honest, I don't really love this one. I think I could have pushed it a little bit more than I did. Um, and my professor <laughs> agrees with me on that one. But I just really wasn't that familiar with graphic novels or that kind of thing. So I didn't know what I could push and what like kind of had to stay there. And I just really wasn't comfortable enough with the design to change it. For the uh, next project, we had to make a logo for either a fictional brand or you could make your own logo. I ended up t making my own logo that I actually use now for basically everything. 
before I had gone into this class, I had already picked a name for my Instagram. I had been posting on Instagram and I didn't have a logo or anything like that, but I had an Instagram already up. And for my Instagram, I chose the name Aaron's Hodgepodge. For the logo idea, I wanted something that looked more playful. I thought that while looking at art logos or logos for artists, I found that a lot of them were really serious, so I wanted my logo to kind of fit my personality and what my brand would look like. So I looked for more playful logos with more funky fonts that I thought would look cool. And uh, the snail, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I really like drawing snails. It's been a thing for a while now. I just really like drawing them. So I drew a snail and then I tried to come up with ideas of what snails mean and this and that. But honestly, I just really like how snails look and I that's, that's the design. I don't know why I chose the colors. Those do mean something. Logo design colors are really important. So the first color that I actually chose was green because a lot of the art that I make is based off of nature and that kind of thing. And also as a brand, green means uh, growth and stability. I wanted people to feel that my brand was stable enough that they could support it. Then the next color that I chose was yellow. Uh, yellow represents joy or optimism. When people look at my logo, I want wanted them to feel happy about uh, the logo and the logo design. The next one that I chose was pink. Um, I chose pink because it represents warmth and playfulness and I just really liked it and they all went together and they were all triadic maybe. That's what this color palette was, was triad. I had to put the logo on things that a company might give out as giveaways so that is what I designed as a little marketing think. <laughs> I really prepared for this video. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a lot of preparing. The next thing that we had to do was we had to design a book cover for a fictional book. I'm a big uh, book fan. I really like reading, so I was really excited about this. For this, I had no ideas of what to do. We had to come up with a story, obviously, of what the book was going to be about, and then we had to put the summary of the book on the sides. I chose a book about pirates because at this time I was doing a 3D project that I'll talk about later with pirates. <laughs> so that that's literally the only reason I chose that. So I chose pirates that are named Libby and Lottie, which just so happened to be my dog's names. And it was about Libby was some like really old pirate, really experienced looking for this uh, sea slug, which is supposed to be worth a bunch of money and very like hard to find. And she's been looking for it forever. And then this new girl, Lottie, comes in and she's like the daughter of really famous pirates. And she thinks she can do anything. They kind of get together and whether or not they betray each other at the end. Libby, my dog, is actually really old. So, and Lottie is really young. So, <laughs> that's what it's literally about. I also did some research for this project. It's not just about my dogs. I based it off of some pirate information, uh, like a famous pirate named Calico Jack and Anne Bonny. Those are both famous pirates. Okay, now I'm going to get into my 3D design. I don't have a lot of pictures of these, but I do have some videos that I posted on Instagram. So I will be using those instead of the pictures. But um, for the first one, it's actually right here. Ta-da. Here it is. Uh, this was the first project in my 3D design class. I am not very familiar with 3D design other than like clay and stuff. I d have not really done anything else with 3D design to be honest. The assignment for this project was we had to take one board of wood and make a sculpture out of it but we only got that board we couldn't buy any more wood and we couldn't use we had to use as much of it as possible i am not good with woodworking and i actually don't like woodworking because the big saws make me nervous so i looked up wood projects or wood sculptures and um, i'll show you some of the pictures that i like and i like that design so i thought i should do it myself at this time i was really interested in like grunge look looking sculptures like really beaten up sculptures i don't know if you can get that from the reference pictures that i'll put up but that's what i was liking at this time so i decided to make a grungy uh, band sculpture so every there's four sides to this and every side represents part of a band like this and like this basically 
two guitars i think you got that drummer and then this one is a really abstract version of a singer these were actually supposed to be non-representational but i'm not very good at that so i made it represent something and that's how it went so <laughs> that's about it um i made it really blocky and kind of abstract looking um then i sanded down some of the paint to make it look like it was worn and beat up and i kind of was messy with my paint um just to kind of give it that like messy grungy look this one will go right here for right now the next one i call underwater subway we had to make a 3d project with cardboard and paper but it had to be flat so it had to be like one plane i will show you some of the reference pictures that i liked for this sculpture idea that's kind of what i modeled my idea off of Again, this was supposed to be non-representational. As you can probably see from the picture, I did not do that. I had a hard time coming up with truly abstract ideas. So instead, I made it kind of represent an ocean. Again, fish. I really like fish. Um, so I included that. Oh, I wanted it to have kind of a, like a graffiti look. I've always been really interested in graffiti. And so I wanted it to kind of look like that with really bright colors. So not really true to the like natural ocean look. Kind of like a Splatoon vibe. So I added bright colors and extra doodles on the parts of cardboard that I did um, to give it more of a street art vibe. The next 3D project that I did is called End of the World. We had to make a scene with a character and a setting. At this time, I was really into goblins and uh, mythical creatures like that. So I chose to make a goblin that was skateboarding. Um, I wanted to make it look like a sci-fi movie, like the end of the world at a sci-fi movie. And so I chose to kind of put like piles of trash everywhere. And I wanted it to look like the character had been surviving for a while and collecting things for survival so i gave it the character a backpack i've always heard that like at the end of a world of the world roaches will be the number one thing that survives like so i thought that if they're the only thing left and they everyone's dying and everything like that the roaches will probably be feasting on all the things that have been left behind by um, the humans including their corpses and food and things like that so i figured they'd probably get really big so that's why i made the roaches like super big because the goblin needs a way to get around i figured that he would probably take one of the roaches um learn how to kill them somehow and hollow out the body and use it as a skateboard i um and i just thought that would be a cool idea and that's pretty much all i did i also added maggots to the trash because of course and the maggots are also kind of big so the next project i believe this is the last 3d project i made in a sculpture about pirates this is when i was also doing the book a cover we had to make um we had to use a book and I decided to make a pirate ship that was getting taken over by sea creatures, kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean. My dad helped me hollow out the middle of the book so that the I, boat that I made out of, I believe it was paper and wire, could fit into that. And then I made all the little creatures out of clay, and then I tore out pages of the book um, while we were carving it out. I crumpled them up and put them into a mixture of glue and water so that they would stick to the page and kind of look like waves. So some of the stuff that I did over the summer includes famous people posters. Um, basically my professor before we left taught us how to make portraits of people using just a picture of them. Um, so I was bored during the summer at my job. Please don't fire me. But I basically just took some uh, pictures of, of my favorite famous people and I used the technique that he showed us. Then I added my own touches like um, using half tones and uh, using like kind of more cool colors and then I put their names behind them and put more filters and effects over it to make it look like it was lights. The next thing that I did was a pride poster. I wanted to make a pride poster for those celebrating pride. I didn't want it to look like your normal like pride poster. Um, with like rainbows everywhere and that kind of stuff. So I tried to make the rainbow kind of more abstract and kind of look more natural. I also looked at uh, some Swiss design posters for this. 
getting back into sophomore year, the first project I made was called Temperance. Um, my college was creating a haunted house and we were to make posters for that haunted house. And we were using the seven deadly sins and the seven heavenly virtues to give everyone a project. I was assigned Temperance, which means moderation or voluntary self-restraint. And it was associated with alcohol abuse in the 1800s when the uh, prohibition movement happened. For this project, I knew that the prohibition or the temperance movement was uh, mostly women who were angry that their husbands were using all their money to uh, buy alcohol. Um, it was also backed by the Protestant church. So I used an angel uh, and a woman angel for the main character of this. And I made the angel have a cloak, kind of what a priest would kind of have. I'm going to put some reference images that I had found on Pinterest here. I made the angel kind of look like it was crying a dark red color, which could be interpreted as either blood or wine. And then I also added barrels of wine or blood, and I made the wine bleed into the robe of the angel, saying something about how alcohol abuse hurt so many families and kind of put a stain on uh, this part of time. The next project, uh, the next two projects were actually not school projects. They were projects that I did for my cousin. Uh, my cousin designed t-shirts and sells them and she wanted a rocket mascot i designed that and i think I'm, i have the pictures of the shirt that she did and then she also wanted a bronco um uh, my jjp logo we had to make another logo for a fake organization for a cause that we felt passionate about i chose transgender rights so i'll show some of the designs that i was basing this off of i didn't want this to look as playful as my previous logo design I kind of wanted it to have a more serious tone, but also kind of more comforting. And I also wanted it to not look like anything that was associated with transgender people because I wanted people to be able to have a hat or have a bracelet on and not be outed. The top part of it is supposed to represent the I love you sign in ASL, which is this. And the spiral uh, was an ancient symbol that I saw that meant facing unexpected challenges and getting through them. Also for that, we had to take a box design for that using InDesign. This is just so we could learn about InDesign. And uh, mine was for a t-shirt. That's it. Okay, the adventure begins. This was a logo that I designed not for school. This was for one of my professor's daughters wedding and it went on a koozie i believe i have that koozie right here booyah booyah wedding koozie the next project that i did we had to pick a professor and make their alter ego which was my public speaking professor her name is brenda and she really likes barbie so um because of that we made her into barbie and this is really just based off of the movie poster the next one is called beep we had to make an artwork based on an onomatopoeia i chose beep because i had previously come up with an idea of making a painting that was traffic and kind of making all the people look different in the traffic like one listening to music one sleeping one angry but i modified that idea to work with this painting I had to have a main character a background and the word in the front and i made it so that the main character was a guy who was super angry about the traffic but then when you look behind him you notice that he's angry because aliens have come down and are killing all the people behind him and he is trying to get out of there the last piece of art that I made in 2023 was a self-portrait. We had to make a self-portrait that we were going to uh, screen print onto a holographic paper and then the portrait had to represent you and something you were passionate about. Again, a lot of my artwork has fish in it, so you'll see this in it, but I'll kind of explain why. I chose to use my sketchbook first because that is one of, I think that's one of the main things that people kind of recognize me with. Like, people just know that I really like to do art. I made it so that it looked like I was entranced in the sketchbook, and I put it above me. I kind of found a picture of it, a, a reference picture that I'll put in, but I wanted to make it look like kind of psychedelic, so I gave it myself white eyes, and then in the other eyes, I put little cds because i thought that would kind of give it like a cooler look i also just really like music i gave myself three heads i don't know why i just thought it looked cool 
Um, <laughs> I made the background fish because one of the causes that is most important to me is um, a clean ocean and taking care of the fish, obviously. I'm, I'm kind of going to go on a little rant here, but I think the basic idea of taking care of the ocean and taking care of the fish kind of represents all the other problems that I am passionate about. Fish are just kind of chilling in their own world and then we decide to kill them and put them in farms and ruin their environment for literally no reason <laughs> and then that's just the wild fish and then you get into kind of the pets that we have so not only do we take them out of their environment we also make the environment that they were in unlivable we put them in pet stores in these little containers all packed together and then if the fish don't sell they actually just throw the fish away they don't <laughs> they don't do anything if the fish gets sick or anything they literally just throw them away like hurting the innocent for no reason um i think that kind of represents a lot of the problems that we have in the world and i think helping fish or caring about the ocean is kind of symbolic of uh, a lot of the problems that we have in the world instead of trying to fit all of those issues into one artwork i just chose to put the fish in there okay if you are interested in seeing the final products of these projects in uh, more detail or you just want to look at them a bit more, I do have a website with all of these posted in the gallery option of that website. Uh, check that out if you'd like. That's about it. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you all soon.